Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. This morning Ukrainian intelligence reported that it targeted two of the Russian big landing ships in the Sevastopol port. They are mostly the same, Yamal and Azov. This is the official report from Ukrainian GUR, so military intelligence, Yamal and Azov ships were targeted. Well, actually, they didn't say that the ships were destroyed, but rather targeted. This table was also posted not by Ukrainian intelligence, but by some of the sources in Telegram. If you believe it, you see that Russia is totally in lack of their big landing ships in the Black Sea. The attack happened during the last night, I already told you about it in my last video. So the central part of the Sevastopol was targeted with the Russian main communication center as well as the bay itself. Yes, we have the official information, but I'm always waiting for the photo or video confirmation too. With the artificial intelligence development, I wouldn't believe in photos or videos too, but at least for now we may check it out as the evidence. Unfortunately, the ships are located at quite remote stands, so it's hard to get to the place by the local eyewitnesses. Also people afraid to take pictures of the Russian military, because after all Russia might punish them for leaking those images to the internet. Plus Russian soldiers also do not upload anything. So the only way to really confirm the case is to wait for the satellite images, Luckily, we have some. This satellite image shows the Russian communication center in the central part of Sevastopol three days ago. Everything is intact and normal out here. And this image was taken this afternoon. As you can see, there's a huge hole in the roof of the building. Again, it is not a residential building, it's the building of the communication center of the Russian Navy. Plus, we have the confirmation from locals because it's very easy to access this building. You can see that there was the fire inside, so at least one storm shadow went to this facility. You can see that the building is behind the fence, so it is really a Russian official building again not the residential one. Ukraine never targets any kind of the residential buildings. Yes, sometimes Russia might intercept Ukrainian drones and only in that case they randomly might target some of the civilian infrastructure. Judging on those images, I might already say that the attack on the infrastructure of the Russian Navy was successful. The Sevastopol Bay is really secured against the water drones, so the only way for Ukraine to attack the Russian ships is to use the aerial attacks, the long-range cruise missiles or drones. We have the confirmation from the Russian military bloggers that Ukraine definitely targeted the Russian military ships. They also say that official Russian propaganda media is silent about it as well as the Russian officials, like callsign sortines, are very angry that the Russian media do not say truce. However, we also have the satellite image from the Sevastopol Bay showing the actual picture. Let's look at those images. Unfortunately, cruise missiles or whatever was launched to target the ships missed them, so in general the ships are okay. So this image is this one. We have a zoom in and there is the trace very close to the ship, but still it missed it, probably causing some of the damages to the ship construction, but it was enough for the ship to caught fire. The second ship it's over here and you may see it here as well, so probably this is the place where the rocket went to, to the floating dock. Judging on the satellite images, I don't see any sort of the marks on those ships. The images are legit, they definitely taken today. However, there is one more image saying that this is probably not the ship we are looking for, but it is over here in the South Bay. Ukrainian media sources say that it was targeted at this spot. Well, judging on the quality of this voltage, it is really hard to tell. Here they publish it once again, but as for me, it could be just a shadow. Because as you can see, the shadow lines are lying at the same side. All from the left part of the ship, and this is the upper part, also the shadow goes on the left. As for me, honestly, it is not the evidence that the ship was targeted. We already know what might happen to the Russian big landing ships if they are targeted by the cruise missiles like Storm Shadow or Scalp. The devastation in that case is enormous, you saw what happened to the Russian communication center. This is the Sevastopol Bay itself, so Azov ship is located over here and Yamal is here. 
For Yamal, I am sure that it wasn't targeted 100%, the shell went very close to the ship, but for this one I give just few percent that it was really targeted, we need to see the pictures from more close perspective or new satellite images should appear in internet, maybe taken during the different time of the day for the shadows to appear at different places. As for this hour, I consider that the ships were not targeted, However, there was the attempt for Ukraine to do so, and this attempt could be repeated once again at any time. As you see, Russia is unable to defend their ships, and you also see why am I always waiting for some sort of the visual confirmation, even though we have the official reports from Ukrainian intelligence and Ukrainian officials, and many of the pro-Ukrainian YouTubers already filmed the videos how Ukraine targeted the Russian ships but I prefer to wait for more information, that's why I filmed this video kind of late today. But it wasn't the only success for Ukraine in Crimea. This morning, the oil facility was targeted not far away from Simferopol, it is the central part of Crimea. There you can see even some sort of the black cloud coming from the place. To be more precise, the facility is located in Gwardeskia village, not really far away from Simferopol and very close to the Russian military base. This is the storage itself, as you can see it is not the oil refinery facility, nevertheless it's also important for Russia, especially in Crimea. On this video you may see what Ukraine uses to target the Russian oil refinery facilities, this one was filmed in Kubyshev. Here we see the drone, it looks very similar to the Bayraktar TB2, I mean the construction in general, but it is not the Bayraktar, it is much smaller one, it is Ukrainian made and called Luti. A long range drone able to fly for at least 800 kilometers, that's the distance to this facility. Here are many of the towers and drone hit one of them. Those. Guys, I post the full video on my Telegram, unfortunately I have many of my videos restricted on this channel, for that reason I'll post the images like this fully on my Telegram and not over here. I'm very sorry, but I have to do it. As for the combat images, unfortunately it will be the same. I think that this platform has some sort of the new policy which is more strict compared to what it was a month ago, so please subscribe for my telegram, it is my alternate source to keep you updated daily, I check everything on my phone, all of the news and to repost those on my telegram page, so you will be updated during all the day with all of the detailed information about Ukraine, about Russia and in general around the world. By the way, it's been confirmed that this particular oil refinery stopped its operation for a known period of time, strangely, why? Just a couple of words about the attack on Krokus Hall near to Moscow. Definitely Russia captured those exact persons who did it. We have the evidence of it based on the clothes they wear, it's all around internet. And they themselves told that they did it. Nevertheless, Russia continued to accuse the Ukrainian side for creating the window at the border. For now, Putin is very close to blame Ukraine totally. If Putin says that Ukraine is responsible for this act, it means that Russia organized it. Those detained persons already said that they got the order through the telegram channels. So there is a known power which organized all of that stuff. My personal opinion that based on the Russian police reaction or lack of reaction, also based on the weaponry which those guys had, AK-105 series which is only in the Russian army, I might speculate that Russia could be responsible for that. However, for now I'll not state it 100%. But if Putin accuses Ukraine for this attack fully, he would say that Ukraine is responsible, it means that he organized it. It's just a funny picture how Russia sees Ukrainian regime. Now let's go to the front lines review, here's the situation near to Avdivka, and Russia went on assault from Tanenka, they occupied this village not a long time ago, and they really want to keep the high pace in gaining more and more Ukrainian ground, but sometimes it may bring them even more losses like it happened near to Tanenka today on the west side from this village. Guys, unfortunately I had to blur this image, but the full video of this is available on my telegram, nevertheless I can show you what is there. there are two Russian tanks which they used to go forward in their convoy. The tanks are equipped with the special anti-mine flags and both of those were targeted by the FPV drones. So the Russian main mid-wave today was stopped. This time Russians mostly used their tanks. 
As for the tanks, Russia sent more of the T-62 outdated vehicles to the front lines. They usually mixed with the new tanks like T-72B3 or even T-90, but still Russia needs all tanks for massive attacks. They usually upgrade those just with the grill and there is no extra armor of this tank. No, it's bare naked as it was made in the factory at the first time which makes this tank not really effective on the front lines. However, they have also the T-62M modification, which means modernized with a good optics and extra armor for the turret. By the way, this particular unit was trophied by Ukrainian army, so this is the Ukrainian tank nowadays. This image was taken in the Ukrainian training center. Meanwhile, Russia also trophied the Ukrainian vehicle, this time it is Bradley. It is already the third Bradley which Russia was able to trophy. It was abandoned in Avdivka together with Leopard 2, but Russia wasn't able to evacuate Leopard 2 on their own territory, they tried, but that evacuation attempt failed for them. The losses for the last three days are dramatic for the Russian Federation compared to Ukraine. So for the last three days, Russia lost 177 units, Ukraine 36. Mostly Russia loses BMPs and supply vehicles after that tanks and artillery. For Ukraine, it is mixed, sometimes tanks, sometimes armored vehicles, sometimes even boats. Two boats that we see on the list were sank by the Russian drones. Luckily, there was no one on board, the boats were just parked. I saw the particular video on the Russian Z channels. Alright, we have just received a new military update, let's see what happened for today. The only update is happening in Novomikhailovka, where Russia probably moved forward. Yes, indeed, it was a grey zone mostly, but today Russia moved over here, occupying the vast territory of the village, so Ukraine really controls the small part of it over here. In this area the fight is ongoing and over here it's been confirmed that Russians took it. Guys, I just want you to understand, now Russia propels forward, but very slowly compared to what it was at the beginning of 2022. It's just uncomparable. And they have dramatic losses compared to Ukrainian army. So this Russian advancement cannot continue forever. It might last just for a few next months and only because Ukraine is in lack of the military resources. If Ukraine obtains the military package from the United States of America, the main one, in a few months Ukraine will be able to stop the Russian advancement elsewhere. In that case, I am sure that Putin will announce a new mobilization in Russia. But even that will not help Russians to break through the Ukrainian defense in general and go deeply into Ukrainian territory as they did in 2022. That's why they want some sort of the peace agreement with the Ukraine, temporary peace, to reform their army, to rebuild it, and try to assault with a huge attack. So for Ukraine, this temporary peace is no-go solution. It was confirmed by our president and by our government. Five days ago, Putin blamed Western intelligence and the United States Embassy for blackmailing the Russian society with their warning about the imminent attack somewhere in Moscow. And today he puts some of the candle honoring the losses of that particular attack. What a bastard. Again today it was the aero attack performed by the Russian Federation. For the last week they did lots of the harm to Ukrainian infrastructure, eliminating very important power plants. And for what I can see, Ukraine is in lack of the tools to target the Russian cruise missiles and drones. Just 18 out of the 29 cruise missiles were targeted. Many of those flown to the western side of Ukraine, targeting power plants. You see how world got used to this Russian terror. No one shares their condolences any longer from our Western partners, let's say, but they shared those towards the Russian Federation after the Moscow attack. Quite unfair, I would say, but we have what we have. My friends, please don't forget to press your huge like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. And also, if you want to support my channel, you may check out some of the links in the video description just below. Many thanks for your kind support. Guys, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.